You're listening to The High Upside Show, a podcast that allows people like you and me to invest our money in a more entertaining way. My name is Keenan Rivals. I'm a photographer by the day, but I make most of my money by flipping cards. In this show, I'll be sitting down with you and sharing my best practices. You'll learn my process, the lessons I've learned, and more importantly, who you should be buying. What's up, guys, and welcome back to The High Upside Show. It's your host, Keenan Rivals. Bringing you guys another podcast. We got two podcasts dropping per week now. I'm really, you know, ha- I'm, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I've, I've been running the schedule. I've been keeping up with it. And I really like dropping two podcasts, man. It, it helps me get a lot of thoughts off. I, I like to bring you guys some some investment tips. But then I just also like to bring you some insight of like what's going on in the hobby and what I'm noticing. And yeah, these are my favorite podcasts to do. So for those of you wondering how I like pick what to talk about, I basically just pick whatever you guys DM me, like whatever DM topic I get the most, I just go and make a podcast about it. I'm like, okay, somebody's asked me this question 20 times. Chances are everybody else has this question as well. Let's, let's just, let's just not answer them because I can't, you know, respond to everybody. Let's just put it out there to the world. So what I've noticed this week is that a lot of new people have been getting into the space. Like, and, and these aren't like new people who are just like, oh, I kind of like sports cards. I like the idea. These are like, hey, I'm a hardcore fan. I love sports. I've been hearing about this opportunity with sports cards. I have a lot of money. What do I need to do? And for somebody like me, that's the best DM in the world because I offer a premium service that you might want to go check out, sign up for, all that good stuff. Never miss an opportunity to plug. What I've also noticed is that though they're aggressive, They have a little bit of like, they're a little bit like lofty about some of the expectations that I think a lot of us are putting on these cards. Like they're like, ah, well, if I buy this card for a hundred bucks, is it really going to go up to four or 500? I have a hard time believing that that doesn't happen in traditional markets. And look, guys, I'm making this podcast this week to just give you some sheer optimism. It's, It's not that you need it because the sports cars market is booming, but a lot of new people again are getting in. A lot of people are bidding on sports cards. A lot of people have large amounts of money and we are early to the game. I know that sounds crazy considering sports cards came out, what, like 30 or 40 years ago, maybe even before then, if you include some tobacco stuff and depending on what sport you're into, but we are early to this market and it's about to get crazy. I I really believe that. I made a blog post a few weeks ago talking about the thousand dollar rookie card. I think we're going to get to a point where that's going to be like the base price for a solid rookie. Like Jason Tatum's Prism PSA 10, $1,000. Luka Doncic's PSA 10 Prism, $1,000. You know, Ben Simmons' Prism PSA 10, $1,000. I don't think that that's like going to be weird to us anymore. Like I, I think that it's weird to us now, but you know, we see Giannis, we see his price points. Giannis isn't the only great player in basketball. I know he's dominant. I know he's big. I know he's like, you know, unique, but he's not the only like fan favorite player. We're going to enter $1,000 rookie card margins for several players. Look how fast Jason Tatum has went up. Jason Tatum used to be like $30 for a prison PSA 10. That card is now trending towards 400 bucks. Just last week, it was like 285. It's just a matter of time before he's $500, before he's up there with Luca. It's just a matter of time before everybody's up there with Luca. And then it's just a matter of time before those go up. And then Luca's going to be a thousand dollars. He's going to be the second player to be a thousand dollars. Anthony Davis is going to be a thousand dollars. Kawhi Leonard's going to be a thousand dollars. It's going to happen. One of my biggest tips that I've been kind of giving everybody is follow the new kids. Last week I did a buy sell hold podcast and I gave a lot of flack to Kobe White. Stand by everything I say with Kobe White. I think he's hella overvalued. But when you look at the overall market, everybody else just might be undervalued. You know, these newer cards, they're high. They're higher than high. They're stupid high. You know, Kobe White's like up there with Trey Young. Like Kobe White's up there with like Jason Tatum. John Morant's up there with Jason Tatum. These are the new standards. The new standard for a Prism rookie isn't $100, which means that everybody else that is before these players that are new, Devin Booker, Przingis, uh, Trey Young, uh, Brandon Ingram, Donovan Mitchell, they're undervalued. And it's just a matter of time before they catch up. Look what happened with, with Optic. 2018-19 Optic dropped. I put out that blog post. Optic skyrocketed. It went to a whole new heights. 
the first thing I did when that blog post dropped was I sold all my optics from 2018, 19, and I went and bought 2017, 18. I got Jason Tatum's optic PSA 10 hollow, $40. Donovan Mitchell's optic PSA 10 hollow, 30 bucks. Jason Tatum optic PSA 10, $10 a piece. I bought them all. I bought them all. And it took a little while, but it was just a matter of time before optic inched its way up to being the same price point as 2018, 19. And it took a little longer for 2016, 17 to catch up. And then boom, 2016, 17 surpassed 2018, 19. It got that first year tag. This is the first year optic. It's super rare, super limited. Passed it. It's the same thing with these rookies. If you look at 2019, 20, everything, it's just sold out. The prices are astronomic. The Everything's hype. Everything's high. And then you look at 2017, 18, you look at 2018, 19, and you're like, man, these cards aren't that high compared to to 2019-20. Like, for Trey Young to be putting up 30 points per game and his prism is only $225, that's not that bad compared to John Morant, who's like, yeah, kind of athletic and, and, and freakish, but he's not like a, he's not blowing you away statistically, yet his prices are higher. And I get it, you know, some of the prism stuff, some of the 2019-20 stuff graded is limited because PSA shut down. But look, it's just all trending upwards. You know, um, do your own research, you know, have your own knowledge and stuff. But I'm just telling you what I see. That's why I made the Ben Simmons podcast. I'm like, his optics, $50, $45. There, there's the, the days of star rookies being $30, $40, those days are done. Like, if you if you find an all-star or a player you think is going to be a consistent all-star, I'm not talking like Kyle Laurie or Chris Paul. I'm talking like young all-stars. Like, the day of their rookies being 20 or 30 bucks is it's a wrap. It's not happening anymore. So if you see that, you know, if you see a Ben Simmons – if you see a Donovan Mitchell, I think Donovan Mitchell is stupidly undervalued. I'm not even a Donovan Mitchell fan. I don't think he's going to win any kind of MVPs or, or host any trophies up, but kid can play ball. He can score. He can shoot. He can dunk. He can. He's exciting. He can get his team passes, you know, the first round of the playoffs. There's no reason why he should be 100 bucks. No reason at all. I'm sure that if I was the Bulls, I'd trade Kobe White for Donovan Mitchell. I'd make that trade any day. If you're a Bulls fan, would you make that trade? If so, then you probably should be making that investment. That's how I look at cards. Like, if I make that trade, then I'll make that investment. He's undervalued. Brandon Ingram, undervalued. That kid can go anywhere. He can leave New Orleans. He's he's one of the top 15 scorers in the, in, in the game. Prism cards, 115 bucks, undervalued. I'm making this to give you guys some perspective, to kind of let you know that we're still trending upwards. We had, you know, some bumpy rows due, due to COVID and due to the, the world pandemic and you know, people are allocating their money in different places, but at the end of the day, the sports card market is dumb early. The, the the shoe investors haven't got in yet. The YouTubers haven't really got in yet. Like, you know, people like me and sports card investor and slap stocks and, you know, a couple of other people, we're kind of leading the space right now, but people, like people haven't really jumped in yet. You know, imagine when they jump in, it's going to be crazy. Imagine when StockX takes off and like, they really start having like crazy liquidity. I mean, look at PSA. They can't even keep up with their orders. SGC is booming right now. When I first got into this hobby, I was able to buy 20 Luca Optic PSA 10 cards just on eBay, just able to buy them. I, I gave it a couple days. I was like, oh, should I buy these? Am I kind of paying too much? Ah, I'll grab them. You can't buy 20 rookie cards of anybody now. You can't even find anybody with 20 cards. Like if you find somebody with 20 cards, they're like some OGs had those cards forever. It's just impossible now. Everything we see is just like old Old Testament. You know what I mean? Like the pop reports, like, oh, Luca has 10,000 cards. The junk era is coming back. 10,000 cards is nothing. Nothing. Bitcoin. I don't know how many of you guys are into Bitcoin. There's 21 million Bitcoin produced. And we're like, that's the most limited asset of all time. There's 10,000 Lucas? That's nothing. We're talking like, the, the whole world here, everyone watches basketball. It's global. You know what I mean? Like 10,000 is, is, is nothing at all. These prices where we're at in the space right now, it's not going to be as shocking, you know, this time next year. Everything's trending. I mean, look at, look at the sports world in general. Like the average player gets like $20 million now. The average card is going to be like a hundred bucks. You know, that's the price to, to enter now. If you want to invest in a guy, you got to pay like 75 to 100 bucks to get his card before he even plays. You know, like if this was a couple years ago, Michael Porter Jr. would be dirt cheap. You know, he was like $20 for a prism, 20, 25 bucks. 
silver might be like 75, 80, and that would be like risky. Like, oh man, that's kind of risky. No, nah, not anymore. Michael Porter Jr. is 200 bucks for a silver. His base is like $75. And in my opinion, that's still too cheap for, for the potential that these cars can give you. The idea that you can take a Luca PSA 10 and sell it for $2,000 right now, and then you can buy a player who has a similar, you know, uh, magnitude or a similar potential as him for 200 doesn't make any sense. Like, that that bet should be more expensive. You know, it, the, the cost to entry, the cost to bet is going to become more expensive because the upside is too high. Look at the stock market right now. Like, if you get a... If, uh, Look at the stock market right now. If a new company IPOs, they don't IPO cheap anymore. The the the, the upside is too high. Stocks don't IPO like at eight bucks, eleven bucks. Like they're IPOing like thirty dollars, fifty dollars because we know that the upside is, is is up there. So we're that that bet's going to become more and more expensive. The, the higher your odds are to win, the more expensive the bet becomes. This this think of betting in general. Like if if the Lakers are playing the Detroit Pistons, the bet for the Lakers to win is going to be more expensive because the potential of them winning is higher. So yeah, I thought I would just make this podcast to, to kind of give you guys some reassurance, to give to give the new people some, some reassurance in this space. I think it's going to keep trending. I think it's important to kind of put these kind of posts out too that are just speculative, that are just my opinions because... I want to document that. I want to let you guys know why I'm investing in sports cars and where I see them going. I see I see a lot of, you know, cards. I see $5,000 Prism Silvers coming. I see, um, I mean, we haven't even talked about national treasures. Like, I just see a lot of, of money coming into this space, a lot higher in price because the demand is there. Like, the, the, uh, just the idea that, that Giannis's Prism Silver is $17,000, and you can get a Luca Prism for two thousand dollars. The upside is is way too advanced. Like the fact like it's you shouldn't be able to buy that for two thousand and potentially sell it for ten thousand if he pans out. It just it's just too. The the bet makes too much sense. Like it's like why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do that? I would risk two thousand to make ten thousand any day. And I understand the pop reports a little bit higher for the prism and all that stuff. But then, you know, that doesn't mean that Luca's overvalued. It just means that Giannis might be undervalued. You know, Gian- Giannis is Giannis should be higher. Like, you know, Trey, like Stephen Curry rookies, they should be higher. Be- between like Bowman tops and tops chrome, Stephen Curry has less than 500 Jim Mint rookie cards. They should be $10,000? Cheap. Cheap. That That's how I look at it. So that's just my perspective, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I know it's a little different from what I normally do, but I think it's important to kind of document my thoughts, my theories, and and, and kind of just share that information with you all. Not to mention, everyone's been asking me like, hey, do you think this can really, like I've been talking about target sales a lot. Like, hey, we need to have target sales. You need to know like what price you want to sell at when you buy a car because that's going to determine your opportunity cost and if you should buy that one over this one. And blah, 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 blah. And everybody's like, hey, you know, been asking me for help with target sales in a premium newsletter. And some people are just like, oh, I don't know if that's going to actually go that much. And I'm like, bro, LeBron's prism was five bucks and now it's over a thousand. I think you're okay with a little four or five X target sale here. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's just my opinion right now. If it changes, I will let you guys know. I'll keep kind of giving you the current state of the hobby the current state of the market type podcast. Let me know if you like this one. You know, again, I know it was a little bit different, but I wanted to be able to answer those questions in my DM. As always, check out the links in the show notes, guys. I actually added something new there that I think you guys really like. A lot of people, you know, kind of want to know what I've been buying and what I've been selling. And look, again, as I said last week, I know the premium subscription isn't for everybody. So I actually opened up a new tier um, it's on Patreon. You can find the link in the show notes. This is going to give you a monthly update of what I'm buying and what prices I'm buying them at. And also, you know, what I'm selling and what prices I'm selling them at. So you'll be able to have the insight to my portfolio, everything that's going on in my portfolio. You'll be able to have that information and it's cheaper than the price of a cup of coffee. You know, if you bought one every week, this is exclusive to 
the podcast audience. I'm not sharing this link anywhere else. It's not on my Instagram. I'm not promoting it nowhere else. This is just for the people who listen to the podcast. So if you want to support your boy, if you want to kind of see my plays and get a look into my portfolio, what type of profits I'm making, then go ahead and check out that link down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy investing.